I am Michelle, a modest office worker at a medium-sized company. I met my husband Kyler through work two years ago and we hit it off right away. We started dating without knowing much about each other, but we had a good time. We made time for dates and gradually got to know each other better. I couldn't deny that I started to see him as a good person. He was kind and gentle, always attentive to my needs and concerns. I felt like I could be happy with him. We didn't take long to feel this way and he proposed after just four months of dating. Thanks to a stable job at a big corporation, the engagement ring he gave me had a sparkling diamond that left me mesmerized. I accepted his proposal, and we quickly found a place to live together, and started planning our wedding. I was looking forward to a grand wedding, but Kyler wanted to keep it small. In the end, we had a modest ceremony with just close family and friends. It's been almost three years since we started living together. I'm now 26, still working, and we don't have kids yet. I wanted to work a bit more, and Kyler wasn't keen on having kids either. Well, I took it positively, thinking it just meant more time for the two of us. But I was starting to want a child. As we were about to celebrate our third Thanksgiving together, Hey, Thanksgiving is coming up. What should we do? I asked Kyler, who was engrossed in his phone. He gave a non-committal, hmm, and said nothing more. I'd like to see your family soon, I continued, a bit annoyed at his lack of response. I have work, he finally said, looking up from his phone. But you haven't been back home in ages, I pointed out. I hadn't seen my in-laws since the wedding two years ago. Every time a long holiday came up, I'd suggest going home, but Kyler would insist he had work. I even offered to go alone, but he opposed it, saying it would be awkward for me and that his sister didn't like me for some reason. So I couldn't just go to his family's home. He wouldn't even give me their phone number, saying he'd handle it. Well, it wasn't like I wouldn't be able to see her forever, so I decided I'd get her contact info when I saw her someday. Is Thanksgiving a work day for you? What about Christmas? At a normal workplace, Thanksgiving and Christmas would be days off, but my husband's workplace doesn't always have holidays. Although Saturdays and Sundays are technically days off for him, we haven't had many dates since getting married due to his entertainment dinners and sudden business trips. Not sure about Christmas, he replied, going back to his phone. And so I decided to spend Thanksgiving and Christmas at my parents' home. I met up with my friend Diana, who asked me something troubling. What do you think about men cheating? Diana wasn't married yet, but it seemed like something was up with her boyfriend. She asked me in a rather displeased manner. Cheating? What? Did something happen? He's always on his phone. He even brings his phone when he showers. Isn't that weird? That made me think. Kyler was always on his phone at home, too. Even when he'd go take showers, he'd bring it along like a pet. I didn't really care, as it had been the case since we got married. But when I heard Diana's story, I was taken aback. Is that suspicious? Of course. He's got his passcode set, too. I would want to see, but I'm hesitant to. I couldn't say anything, as I was in the same situation. In fact, I started to worry that Kyler might be cheating, too. I couldn't relax at my parents' home after that, and thought about going home early. But Kyler wouldn't be there anyway. So, I stayed at my parents' home, feeling uneasy, and returned home as planned. Hey, Kyler, what are you always doing on your phone? I asked him as soon as I got home. He was on his phone again, but looked a bit flustered at my question, and put his phone in his pocket. I get a lot of work-related messages. I'm leading a major project, and I can't afford to be away from my phone. Hmm. I always thought my husband would never lie to me, but lately, something just didn't feel right. He kept saying he was busy with work but I couldn't help but question everything he did and said. The faint scent that lingered around him was one red flag. He usually got home late, around 11 p.m. 
and often said he was entertaining clients or working overtime. Yet every so often I catch a sweet smell coming off his suit, like a woman's perfume. I don't wear perfume myself, so I'm not an expert, but it smelled like something a younger woman would wear. As I took his suit jacket to hang it up, there it was again, a sweet scent. I could confront him right there, but I didn't have any concrete evidence. Afraid of making him dislike me, I suppressed the growing doubts and worries in my mind. But then an opportunity came along. He forgot his phone on the dining table while showering. As I sipped my homemade herbal tea, I glanced at his phone. It'd be easy to look now, but if he found out, he could lose trust in me. I was torn. I wanted to clear my suspicions. But if he really was cheating, I may not recover from the shock. Various thoughts flooded my mind as I looked at that phone. Suddenly, it buzzed with a notification. Startled, I took a peek. It was just a message alert, but the content wasn't displayed. I couldn't see the content because he said it so it doesn't show up. I reached for his phone, making sure he had not come out of the shower yet. I held my breath as I moved my fingers to open the phone, but it was locked. Of course. Everybody locked their phone. I was annoyed, but also relieved, as I went to put the phone back. Then it buzzed again, this time an incoming call. The screen read, Gabriella. Who was Gabriella? I didn't recognize the name, but I knew I could still answer it even though it was locked. I naturally slid my finger across the screen and put the phone to my ear. Hello, Kyler. Is this a good time? The voice on the other end was a young woman. I got even more nervous. Uh, Kyler's in the shower right now. What? Who is this? I told her he couldn't talk and her voice changed. It got lower and colder. I'm his wife. This is not good. She hung up after saying just that. What did not good mean? I put the phone back on the table. It was clear. He was cheating, and probably with Gabriella. But I didn't have proof to confront him. I looked at his phone on the table, pondering. What did this mean for me? More importantly, what's the right thing to do? Should I get angry? Should I cry? Should I pretend I don't know? No, pretending is off the table now. I did answer the phone, after all. Oh, there it is. Lost in thought, I didn't notice him come out of the shower. I caught my husband reaching for his phone and looked at him. Was he checking something or typing a message? It was hard to say. Gabriella called. When he heard this, he stopped what he was doing and looked at me. Oh, did she? The moment our eyes met, he averted his gaze and started fiddling with his phone again. Normally, he'd sit next to me after a shower to have a beer. But not this time. He seemed like he was about to leave. Wait, can we talk for a second? I stopped him with a smile and gestured for him to sit. What about? He stayed put, but didn't come closer. Who's Gabriella? A co-worker. I bet she's cute. She sounds like it from her voice. Hearing this, he turned his surprised eyes toward me. How would you know? I answered the phone. What? As I continued speaking cheerfully, his face transitioned from surprise to what looked like anger. He stopped towards me and pulled my hand. What's the big idea answering my call like that? I had never heard my husband raise his voice like that before. Though taken aback by his sudden change, I knew I couldn't back down. I stood up, looked him in the eye, and asked, What's your relationship with this Gabriella person? We'd never had a fight since we met. Maybe that's why he looked surprised for a moment. She's just a co-worker. His voice softened, and he sat down on a nearby chair. I sat back down, too. I couldn't press him further at this point. I'd have to gather evidence later. Just then, his phone rang again. Another call? I asked, noticing his troubled expression as he looked at the screen. He nodded and started to get up, but I grabbed his hand. 
Answer it on speaker here. If it's work-related, you can turn off the speaker. I suspected it was Gabriella again. I instructed him to let me hear the voice and content. He sat back down and reluctantly answered the call. Kyler, what was that message about? The voice from the speaker was his mother's. So it was his mom. I felt a bit relieved. But he didn't respond, his face turning pale. I nudged him to continue the conversation, but he remained silent. Are you listening? What's this about Rochelle being dead? Tell us where to go. Your father and I are coming to see you right now. His mother raised her voice, frustrated by his silence. I was shocked. What's going on? I'm right here. I looked at my husband, who was trembling, gripping his phone. Um, I'm alive. A moment of silence followed. What? Rochelle, what's going on? His mother sounded just as confused. I was equally puzzled. Why did she think I was dead? What's going on? Kyler texted me saying you passed away and that he'd handle the funeral alone and that I didn't need to show up. This made no sense. Was it a spam text or something? I briefly thought. But Kyler's trembling suggested he actually did contact his mother. I'm coming over tomorrow. His mother, still confused, but seeing no other way to proceed, hung up. I asked my husband for an explanation, but he said nothing. Fortunately, it was still Thanksgiving break, so I was going to be home. I didn't know he was working, but I told him to take a sick day if he had to, and I went to our bedroom. He didn't come to the room that night, and it seemed like he slept on the couch. The next morning, I woke him up, made breakfast as usual, and we waited for his mother. He didn't say a word and looked scared the whole time. He didn't touch his phone, either. I didn't bring up his behavior and quietly waited. Around noon, his mother arrived. Kyler's father was with her, carrying lots of bags. I greeted my in-laws warmly, and they reciprocated with smiles, handing me the bags and explaining they were gifts. There were homemade treats from his mother, famous sweets from a local shop, and lots of cakes. We chatted about trivial things for a while, but Kyler didn't join in, shrinking in a corner. I couldn't ignore it any longer. I made tea for my in-laws, pulled my husband by his shirt to sit next to me, and sat down. What's going on, Kyler? My father-in-law finally broke the awkward silence, looking exasperated at my husband and I. My husband flinched at his voice, lifting his downcast face to look at him but he quickly looked down again, as if terrified by his father's expression. Spit it out. My father-in-law raised his voice, and my husband started to explain in a shaky voice. Based on my husband's account, he met Gabriella through work shortly after we got married. Initially, they were just colleagues, but things changed when they started working closely on a project. Gabriella confessed her feelings for him. He told her he was married, but she was okay with it. So they started dating. They were together for a little over two years. He said all this happened shortly after we got married. At first, he thought it was just a fling, but he started to fall for Gabriella. He considered divorcing me to marry her, but realized he'd have to pay a hefty settlement if he admitted to cheating. So he tried to make my in-laws dislike me, thinking I'd initiate the divorce. He even spread rumors about me to my in-laws and his sister. But my in-laws never showed any signs of disliking me, and I didn't seem to be bothered by it. So he thought about cutting ties with me and paying the settlement. So he told his parents that I had passed away. My in-laws and I were dumbfounded by his foolishness. You're unbelievable. I'm so sorry, Rochelle, about our poor son. My mother-in-law apologized, holding back tears. I told her to look up. And then she looked at my husband. Kyler was visibly shaking, his face pale. If you're willing to pay the settlement, I'm okay with the divorce. I told him, smiling. At that moment, my father-in-law landed a punch on my husband's head. You idiot. Break up with her right now. You've lost your freedom. Go home. My husband was too stunned to resist. Kyler was frightened by my father-in-law's furious behavior and it looked like he was about to burst into tears. I couldn't help but laugh a little. We'll take responsibility for the settlement. 
my mother-in-law said, tears streaming down her face. I wrapped my arms around her and smiled at her. Don't worry about it, I reassured her. After hearing all this, staying together seems foolish. I have a job and we don't have kids. I'm sorry I couldn't be a better wife, I said to my mother-in-law after hearing about my husband and immediately losing interest. My in-laws apologized to me over and over again and left the house, dragging my reluctant husband. We divorced shortly after. I claimed a hefty settlement and kept the house. A few days later, I got a call from an unknown number. It was my sister-in-law. Apparently, she had also been misled by Kyler, and that was why she never tried to get to know me. It turned out, both my sister-in-law and I had no hard feelings about each other, ever, and she wanted to reach out to me. She wanted to be friends, even though we were no longer sisters by marriage. She said she wanted to meet up. So I agreed to meet with her and ended the call. A few days later, I saw my sister-in-law for the first time since the wedding. We both were happy to catch up, and we quickly became comfortable with each other after chatting and hanging out. From that day on, we stayed in touch and became good friends. She even filled me in on my ex-husband's situation. Apparently, Gabriella had no intention of marrying him. She was just using him for financial support. When I found out, she started making plans to cut ties with him. And apparently she dumped him pretty quickly. He had to quit his job when he moved back in with his parents. And now Kyler's doing manual labor, which he despises. Under his father's strict supervision... Hearing all this lifted my spirits. My sister-in-law was probably worried about me, even as she shared this with a smile. I laughed along and told her not to worry, as they planned to keep him under even stricter training. I've learned to be more cautious in choosing a life partner after going through a divorce. I told my sister-in-law that it's all good now, as this experience has led to a positive outcome.